Welcome back, Health Accumulation Nation. Today we're talking about heartburn and how uncomfortable it is. You know, about three years ago, I had heartburn. And as far as I know, it's the only time in my life I've had heartburn. And I had this feeling of just crazy fullness in my stomach. And then I laid down to go to bed at night. And about 20 minutes after I laid down, my esophagus, like right between my chest here, it felt like it was being ripped apart. It's like, man, like there's just this ball of fire, or like a baseball that's like just trying to move its way up. It was so uncomfortable. And there was no escape from this discomfort. You know, I couldn't sleep it off. I couldn't fall asleep because it was just like, ah, oh, I couldn't get in a position that, was, that would help anything. It was so intense. And so finally I got up, I walked around for a while, and then I was like, okay, I'm just gonna go downstairs, I'm drink some water. I got, I, it's like some kefir, some goat kefir, tried that. Still, I'm not getting any relief. So then I went and chewed up a whole handful of DGL or deglycerized licorice root. And this finally gave me some relief from just this torture. Um, and after a couple hours, I was able to, to lay down and finally go back to sleep. But that taught me a very good lesson that, man, don't eat right before bed and definitely don't eat anything big right before bed. And I don't even remember what it was that I ate um, other than I think, you know, there's probably a little extra stress in our, our life, my life. We were just, you know, a few months in having our twins, like maybe six months in and just like up all night all the time. And, you know, twins, they're, they're a lot. If you've had twins, you know how it is, even though they're just this great blessing. So thankfully, I haven't had that experience again. And uh, I don't want to, but I've seen plenty of patients who have heartburn, acid reflux experience every single day of their life. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of pregnant women that have this, you know, uh, heartburn, this pain, discomfort in their, in their esophageal area with the pregnancies. And so I know it is, it is quite common and there's way too many people that are suffering with this that need not suffer. So as you probably are aware, the standard fix for heartburn is, you know, throwing some Tums in, you know, all that food coloring in the Tums, ranitidine or omeprazole, Prilosec. And, you know, recent research is actually showing after years, and actually I would say decades of ranitidine being recommended, this, this anti-acid being recommended in pregnancy, that uh, saying it's okay, it's now being associated with birth defects. You've probably seen that there's like legal issues all over the place on it. And, you know, I don't know about omeprazole. We don't have specific strong data saying it's problematic, but I would bet that omeprazole as well, Prilosec, given that it, you know, it shuts down acid production in the stomach, making it so that we cannot digest and assimilate food as well as we could. And, uh, you know, in adults who take omeprazole regularly, it leads to massive nutrient deficiencies, you know, from all kinds of minerals, all kinds of fat cell vitamins, B vitamins. And so if we're taking an acid blocker when we're pregnant, when we're trying to, you know, create this amazing human being from scratch, <clears throat> we need all the minerals and vitamins available. That's like, you know, why women take prenatal, prenatals, why, why we take blood vitality when, when you're pregnant. It's because we need all those nutrients available to maximize capacity to have a healthy pregnancy, healthy birthing process, and a, a healthy baby. So blocking them seems like a bad, bad idea, right? Uh, both for the mother and for the baby. You know, all the nourishment necessary, required, available, all capacity, we want it present when a, a woman is pregnant. And you know, you think about it, all the nutrients like iron, zinc, B12, calcium, you know, they're already challenging enough to get sufficient, even magnesium, to get sufficient levels of these uh, in pregnancy. And, and that would be before, you know, shutting down our digestive tract or a female's digestive tract with a, an acid blocker. So I would at all costs try to stay away, stay away from them. And acid blockers cause uh, also just disruption in our gut bacteria and the balance of the flora, both of the mom and the baby. You know, this potentially could lead to allergies later on, you know, inflammatory illnesses later on uh, if they're done consistently and, and that flora is deranged. So I think it's high value to look at other ways to overcome heartburn, acid reflux, uh, and we don't need to suffer with these things because I don't want to use Prilosec because, you know, it's, it's problems. We don't need to suffer. We just need to look at other ways of, of helping and remedying the situation uh, to give the mother and the baby all the opportunity possible to thrive in life. And yes, I'm talking about moms and babies, but 
this will work for, for most, most adults too. Um, so what is causing heartburn with pregnancy in the first place? Especially when, say, a woman has not had heartburn previously. So there are a couple things. One would be that uh, you, were, you have a big old ball of a human growing in your womb, which puts all this pressure up against your stomach, up against your diaphragm, and can literally, you know, one cause the high yellow hernias, but also, um, you know, you're just, just going to compress and push all that, take away the space that, the, that you'd be digesting stuff in your stomach. <clears throat> you know, this would be similar to say somebody who has um, a bunch of abdominal fat and acid reflux heartburn, much more common with a bunch of abdominal fat. Uh, because you just have all that pressure on your diaphragm all the time. Uh, secondly, the upkick in hormones during pregnancy can really slow down the digestive processes, meaning that food doesn't move from the stomach to the small intestine downstream nearly as quickly or as efficiently as it would uh, when you weren't pregnant, when the hormones weren't at, at this high level. And on top of that, the uh, smooth muscle of the sphincter of the esophagus uh, and, and the stomach, the, it does not close. So there's a sphincter, this little like squeezy valve between your esophagus up here and your stomach down here. And it just does not clamp shut as firmly or as quickly as it does normally when you're not pregnant and you don't have acid reflux issues. This can be similar to the, uh, you know, the, the uh, ligament laxity that a pregnant woman will have, uh, say knees, hips uh, during pregnancy because of that big upkick in hormones. And that same laxity it will be present in the sphincter of the stomach. You know, and some women will notice it and so, some women won't notice it. Uh, but those who notice it, unfortunately, will probably have a whole lot more heartburn. So how can we help this? Step number one is looking at food items that you may be consuming that could be irritating. For instance, coffee. And pretty much really any caffeine is going to be an issue. Peppermint and, and really the whole mint family as a whole. Because the mint family can be relaxing to that esophageal sphincter, that sphincter between the stomach, between the stomach and the esophagus. Uh, citrus, you know, spicy foods, tomatoes, greasy fried foods, garlic, onions. There can also just be random foods that you otherwise would think these are perfect, these are great. For whatever reason, when you're pregnant, they're a problem. And so uh, you just got to recognize that and be okay with it. And say, okay, maybe I can't have that as much of that. Or I need, you know, smaller bits of it. I need to chew it better. Definitely can't have it, you know, two two to four hours before eating for um, going to bed kind of thing. And that can make a big, big difference. And when it comes to meal size, especially uh, when you hit that second trimester and beyond, you really want to decrease the meal size because there's just a smaller space, literally smaller space, to fit everything into because of that pressure of that big old bowling ball of a kiddo that's growing inside of you. <clears throat> and so if you have smaller meals, uh, you know, more frequently throughout the day, that can work much better than big old meals and, you know, and feeling like, oh my goodness, I'm just so full and, and all that up pressure and then the heartburn and all that stuff come along. And then I would definitely aim to try to give yourself that, you know, two to three hours with minimal food uh, before you go to bed. And that some for some women that can be water, like drinking a bunch of water before bed can be like, Oh, here it comes. So less in the stomach before bed, the better. And then after each eating session, try to keep yourself upright. You know, stand up, get your posture high, get those shoulders back, go for a little walk, you know, really to utilize gravity and, and decrease that compression on your stomach, create as much space as possible because the more space, the easier thing, food can move from your stomach to your small intestine and then heartburn is way less, way less likely to happen. And then, uh, for sure, do not lay down flat or on your stomach uh, after meal. Okay, so what things might help us that we'd actually would input into us? So something that can help is like goat kefir or cow kefir, maybe coconut kefir. You know, these are um, very soothing. They've got good you know, flora in them. But uh, some people they help, some people they don't. So you just have to test it out for yourself. And when it comes to supporting yourself, beyond food items so meat fruit vegetables generally are the easiest but uh and cooked vegetables at that there is a herb called licorice root um and a specific type of that herb called deglycerized licorice where basically they take away the glycerizic acid from it so it doesn't have potential blood pressure affecting blood pressure effects and it can come in chewables or or in a powder and that can be super effective 
uh, you know, taken once a day, twice a day, three times a day, after every single meal, 50 times a day, however much you need to make sure uh, that um, you're not having the heartburn, you're not having the burning sensations, you're not having the, you know, the, just this ripping pain through your esophagus. Uh, <clears throat> like I mentioned, I took it a few years ago, about three, five, three and a half years ago, when I had the uh, heartburn. I mean, we have DGL in our cupboard nonstop. We, whether it's my wife who's pregnant, she's been pregnant a lot of times, or, you know, all the ladies that come through that are pregnant, uh, our buddies and stuff, it's always present because you never know when you might need it. And basically DGL, <clears throat> when you chew it up or you swallow it, it creates this mucilaginous layer. It causes the mucinous cells to create more mucus. And so along your esophagus, on your, along your stomach lining, you actually create a barrier against the acid. And, you know, this can both work for uh, allowing the tissue to heal and, and decrease the effects of um, you know, tissue jam damage uh, when, when the, if the acid is present, if that sphincter isn't closing all the way up. Uh, another thing I would use is, or consider using, is the amino acid glutamine. And that glutamine, I would get in powder form if you were trying to use it for heartburn. Glutamine is the most abundant amino acid in the digestive tract. Uh, it supports healing and regeneration of the esophageal tissue, of, of the stomach lining. And, you know, we use it for all kinds of digestive disorders. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, in powder form, it can be re really supportive uh, of healing that um, irritation caused by um, heartburn. And then probiotics. So there's a multitude of studies demonstrating that there are benefits up and down the digestive tract using probiotics. And this includes helping with uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease, heartburn, acid reflux, uh, you know, ulcers, all that kind of stuff. So definitely something to consider. I would say with probiotics, same deal. Um, as far as the kefir, some people it's amazing for, some people it doesn't work quite as well. Uh, but consistency is key if you want help with probiotics. You know, rather than taking it just one-offs when you have symptoms, you really do got to take it day after day after day if you want to see benefit on that front. And there's, you know, lots of benefits related to probiotics in babies and decreasing allergies and that kind of stuff. So another herb to consider is marshmallow root. And this can both be in capsule form, I've seen it be effective, as well as in tea form. If you make it uh, in tea form, be sure to let it cool down uh, and even consider putting it in your refrigerator until it's cooled down. And you will see that this thick mucilaginous layer uh, is created, which is great for offer offering that protective layer when you drink it. So similar to the actions of the DGL, except for the marshmallow root itself is literally create like almost like a marshmallow sur marshmallowy surface along your esophagus and stomach lining. And, you know, there are many other herbs, many other formulas that can be used that, that I use. Um, that don't necessarily have, uh, say, safety studies on them in pregnancy, though they seem crazy safe. And the fact that you could potentially take ranitidine, Prilosec, Tums, these kind of things, all that food coloring and weirdness, um, you'd say, man, I'm pretty sure we can probably take this. Um, and it shouldn't be much of an issue. That would be, you know, especially like slippery elm, aloe vera, those being very common ones. But it's still a good idea. Talk to your doc, um, get their A-OK -okay, um, before jumping into that. If you feel like the food is really just sitting in your stomach, I mean, I'm not moving th food through well, especially during pregnancy, then I would definitely consider it a digestive enzyme. And you would take that digestive enzyme, you know, either with your meal or a few minutes before you eat your meal. And that also can help break down food much, much quicker, much more efficiently to clear it from your stomach to your small intestine, which can definitely work to relieve um, and decrease the likelihood of having uh, acid reflux. All right. If you know a pregnant woman, you've got to share this with her. You've got to let this lady know, hey, there's, there's support out here. There's things you can do. You do not have to just suffer. You don't have to just like pop acid blockers and, you know, shut down your digestive process to overcome acid reflux. And if you've used something in pregnancy and it was just amazing, you're, you're so grateful you learned about it or you tried it and it worked, then man, share, share it in the comments. So many other ladies out there would love to know uh, what, what you used, how it worked, because you know, that's really how we move this thing along. Unless we want to just be you know, relegated to drugs all the time. So we, we share our stories, share what's worked, and uh, we help each other out. All right, I'm Dr. Matt. Have a great week.